Under the calm waters of the South China Sea, something powerful is moving. Six Chinese nuclear submarines, each armed with 12 ballistic missiles, now patrol a region that has been quiet for decades. And according to U.S. defense officials, these are the submarines that terrify the Pentagon. For years, these submarines stayed hidden in silence. Now, Beijing wants the world to see them. Sleek black silhouettes glide through the Pacific, carrying weapons that could reach across oceans. But why now? Why invite the world to look at what was once their most secret weapon? Now for the first time, China believes it can strike back even after being hit first. And that single belief changes everything for the United States. At the center of this shift lies one question that keeps American defense planners awake at night. Can these submarines, hiding in the shallow waters off Hainan Island, strike the U.S. mainland without ever leaving home territory? Some experts say no. The range is not enough. Others warn that if even one of them can, the balance of power across the Pacific could tip overnight. In 2025, China state media released rare footage of a Type 094, Gene-class submarine leaving port on patrol. Weeks later, during a national parade, the world saw its newest weapon, the JL-3 a missile that can travel close to 12,000 kilometers. But behind the parades and official confidence lies something that truly unsettles the Pentagon. Because what makes these submarines dangerous is not only what they carry, it is where they can hide. For China, building a nuclear submarine fleet was never about matching numbers with the United States. It was about something deeper, survival. A second strike, the ability to retaliate, no matter what happens on land. The project began quietly in the early 2000s. China's first Type 094, known in the West as the Gene class, took shape in shipyards along the northeastern coast. By 2007, the first of these boats entered service. It was large, nearly 135 meters long, powered by a pressurized water reactor, and designed to carry 12 intercontinental ballistic missiles. At the time, it was a huge leap forward, but it was also a warning to the world that China's deterrence strategy was changing. Over the next decade, more submarines followed. By 2015, Chinese patrols had begun quietly under the surface of the South China Sea. Each patrol was a signal that Beijing was moving closer to something only a handful of nations had achieved, a continuous sea-based nuclear deterrent. Today, Six of these submarines operate under the People's Liberation Army Navy. They are based at Yulin Naval Base on Hainan Island, hidden behind reinforced blast doors and carved tunnels. Satellite photos show vast submarine pens dug directly into the rock, giving the Gene-class boats immediate access to deep water. From there, they slip into what China calls its bastion, a protected zone of the South China Sea guarded by destroyers, aircraft, and land-based missile systems. To Western intelligence, this bastion is a puzzle. It is heavily defended, but also shallow, making submarine movement risky and noisy. Yet Beijing believes it is the safest place on Earth for its nuclear fleet. Protected by layers of anti-access and area denial systems, these submarines can hide in friendly waters and still threaten distant targets. By 2024, the U.S. Department of Defense confirmed what many analysts had long suspected. China's nuclear arsenal had crossed 600 operational warheads, and its submarine force could now maintain near-continuous patrols. For the first time in its history, China could keep a nuclear-armed submarine at sea at all times. That single capability changed how Washington viewed the Pacific. It meant that even if China's land-based missiles were destroyed, retaliation could still come from beneath the ocean. And that possibility, the idea that a strike on China might never be the final blow is what makes these submarines so valuable to Beijing and so concerning to the Pentagon. For the Pentagon, the danger is not just that China's submarines exist. It is what they can carry. Each Gene-class submarine holds up to 12 ballistic missiles. For years, those were the JL-2s, with a range of around 7,000 kilometers. Powerful, but limited. To reach most of the continental United States, the submarines would need to leave China's protective waters and sail deep into the Pacific. Doing that would expose them to American surveillance and attack. Then came the JL-3, 
a missile designed to push those limits far beyond what Washington expected. Its estimated range is between 9,000 and 12,000 kilometers. That means it could potentially hit the U.S. mainland from inside the South China Sea. If true, China would no longer need to risk its submarines in open waters. But here is where the tension begins. Not everyone agrees that the JL-3 can actually do it. The Federation of American Scientists and the U.S. Department of Defense both say no. Their assessments suggest that a Gene-class submarine would still need to move farther east to reach all of the U.S. To them, the JL-3 is an improvement, but not enough to guarantee full coverage. On the other side are defense analysts from size and war on the rocks. They argue that the missile's extended range, combined with new guidance technology, makes it capable of striking the U.S. mainland even from Chinese coastal waters. If they are right, then Beijing already holds the power to threaten American cities without ever leaving its bastion. And that possibility terrifies the Pentagon. This debate has created a quiet panic inside U.S. naval circles. For decades, American dominance under the sea was absolute. The U.S. Navy could track almost any submarine on Earth. But now, with China's fleet operating closer to home, under thick layers of defense, detection becomes far harder. The risk is that one day, a single undetected submarine could slip out unnoticed. That thought changes strategy, budgets, and priorities. It forces Washington to think differently about nuclear deterrence in Asia. If even one submarine can disappear with 12 missiles on board, then every patrol becomes a question of survival. And this is where the real fear begins to spread through the Pentagon's war rooms. For all of China's progress beneath the waves, the Gene-class submarine carries one major flaw. It is loud, compared to the U.S. Navy's Ohio-class submarines, which are considered among the quietest in the world. The Gene-class is much easier to detect. Open source studies and leaked acoustic charts estimate that the Type 094 is roughly as noisy as a Soviet Delta-class submarine from the late Cold War. That level of sound makes it difficult to hide in open water, where American and Japanese sonar networks constantly listen for intruders. This has been China's most persistent weakness. A nuclear deterrent that can be found is a deterrent that can be destroyed. And that reality has haunted Chinese naval planners for years. But the story is not as simple as it looks. While Western analysts laugh at the gene class for being noisy, Chinese engineers have quietly been improving it. The upgraded Type 094 Alpha version features a redesigned propeller, vibration dampening inside the reactor compartment, and new sound isolation for machinery. These refinements may not make it silent, but they make it much harder to track, especially within China's heavily defended coastal zone. And that zone is where the real strategy begins. Instead of trying to match the U.S. in deep ocean stealth, Beijing built a fortress around its submarines. It is called the Bastion Strategy. Within the South China Sea, layers of protection overlap. Anti-ship missiles from the mainland, long-range bombers, surface fleets, and undersea sensors all combine to create a web of defense. Inside that web, the Gene class can operate with relative safety. To the Pentagon, this approach is clever and dangerous. It means China does not need to risk losing its submarines far from home. They can stay hidden within friendly waters, protected by the world's largest anti-access defense network, and still hold American bases or cities at risk. This strategy has another side effect. It complicates U.S. tracking operations. American attack submarines can monitor Chinese movements in the open ocean, but entering a fortified bastion near Hainan Island is a different story. It is crowded, shallow, and packed with sonar traps and decoys. Even for advanced American subs, that environment is hostile. In short, the Gene class may not be the quietest submarine in the world, but it is quiet enough when it matters most. And that is what truly unsettles Washington. Because what once seemed like a technical flaw, now looks like part of a much larger plan. In the past, China's navy avoided attention. Its nuclear submarines were ghosts, never shown on camera and rarely mentioned in public. But in 2025, that changed. For the first time, state television aired high-definition footage of a Gene-class submarine leaving port. Sailors stood on deck as the vessel slid into the water. 
the camera lingering just long enough for foreign analysts to take notice. A few weeks later, during a national parade in Beijing, the JL-3 missile rolled through Tiananmen Square. It was a public declaration that China now had a credible nuclear force at sea. To many in the West, this was more than symbolism. It was information warfare. China was using visibility as a strategic tool, showing just enough to suggest strength while keeping the details hidden. Every frame, every headline, was designed to raise questions. How many submarines were truly operational? How often were they patrolling? Could the United States even find them anymore? By stirring those questions, Beijing achieved something that secrecy never could. Uncertainty. And uncertainty is the foundation of deterrence. Inside Washington, analysts debated the motive. Was this transparency meant to reassure or to intimidate? Some believe the footage was a signal to the United States and its allies. China has reached nuclear maturity. Others saw it as a performance aimed inward, a way to reinforce national pride and project confidence at home. Meanwhile, the footage sparked a race among intelligence agencies. Teams dissected every frame, comparing paint patterns, hull numbers, and crew patches to estimate how many gene class boats were actually at sea. Even so, answers remained elusive. That was the point. At the same time, Chinese and Russian fleets began joint patrols near Japan and Alaska. These operations showed coordination and confidence, demonstrating that China was no longer content to defend its coast. It wanted to be seen as a global naval power capable of shaping events far beyond its borders. For the Pentagon, this shift in messaging mattered. A country that once hit its submarines was now parading them. A deterrent meant to stay silent was suddenly being broadcast around the world. And that raised a chilling thought among US strategists. If China is showing us this much, what is it still keeping hidden? The question left an uneasy silence in Washington's war rooms. Because sometimes the loudest signal in warfare is not the sound of engines or explosions. It is the moment your opponent finally stops hiding. While China's submarines disappeared beneath the waves, the response from the United States and its allies was immediate. In the skies above the Pacific, new patrol routes appeared. US Navy P-8 Poseidon aircrafts began sweeping the South China Sea more frequently, dropping sonar buoys in precise grids and listening for what might be lurking below. In Japan, the Maritime Self-Defense Force stepped up anti-submarine drills, training with American destroyers and submarines. In Australia, the Royal Australian Navy expanded its cooperation with U.S. forces under the AUKUS agreement, preparing to field its own nuclear-powered attack subs. Every nation in the region knew what the new game was about keeping track of China's silent fleet before it could vanish. The waters off Hainan Island are among the most heavily defended on the planet. Any foreign sub that ventures too close risks detection by radar aircraft, underwater drones, and fixed sonar nets. Even U.S. Navy commanders admit that entering this zone would be a high-stakes mission. One mistake could expose a billion-dollar submarine to enemy sensors. So Washington began adapting. It invested in quieter drones, new listening arrays, and AI-driven sonar systems capable of detecting even faint acoustic signatures. Congressional hearings in 2024 and 2025 referenced China's expanding nuclear fleet as a primary driver of U.S. naval spending. The message was clear. America was preparing for a new kind of arms race. But this race is not just about hardware. It is about credibility. If China can convince its rivals that its submarines are untouchable, it gains power without firing a shot. If the United States can prove it can still track them, it keeps the balance of deterrence intact. Between those two perceptions lies the thin line of modern nuclear stability. By late 2025, the tension stretched across the Pacific. China's patrols had become routine. American aircraft circled overhead. And beneath the surface, Two of the world's most powerful navies were locked in a silent contest that no one could afford to lose. Because every patrol, every sonar ping, every shadow on the ocean floor now carries the same question. Who really controls the depths? Deep inside China's shipyards, engineers are already working on the next generation. The Type 096. It will be quieter, larger, 
and built to carry the JL-3 missile as standard. Analysts believe it could match the stealth of US Ohio-class subs, finally giving China a truly invisible deterrent. If that happens, the balance under the Pacific will tilt undeniably.